Good morning, everyone. Welcome to SBIA 2020 Advancing Innovative Science in Generic Drug Development Workshop. My name is Meng Hu. I'm with Division of Quantitative Methods and Modeling, Office of Research and Standard, OGD. The topic of this presentation is quantitative methods for determining equivalence of particle size distribution. This presentation reflects the views of the author and should not be construed to represent FDA's view and the policies. Particle size distribution, PSD, is a valuable indicator for characterizing physical chemical properties of a, uh, of a material. Therefore, the PSD comparisons can be a useful tool for bioequivalence assessment. The FDA has recommended equivalence approaches to a compare PSD of a generic and uh, reference list drug ROD products when appropriate. Learning objective. So in this presentation, uh, we aim to provide you first an overview of the recommended quantitative approaches for determining equivalence of a PSD. Second, we will provide you hypothetical case examples of equivalence assessment of a complex PSD, for example, multimode PSD. This slide shows a general framework for equivalence assessment of PSD between test and reference products. From left to right, if the original PSD profile is a monomode, as shown in this figure, then the mean and the width metric can be used to describe PSD, for example, D50 and SPAN. Then the population bioequivalence method, we call the PBE, can be used to conduct statistical equivalence test. And if the original PSD profile is a complex PSD profile, for example, multimode, the figure shows a bimodal example of the uh, particle size distribution. Then the profile comparison method can be used to describe the, dis the difference between PSD. For example, Earth's move distance. Then the PBE method can be used to conduct the statistical equivalence test. A brief introduction for PBE. The PBE has been developed to conduct a statistical bioequivalence test. It has been widely used in the equivalence assessment for in vitro EE study. In this slide, I will not go through the detail uh, about the equation and the parameter, but there are the two points I want to mention uh, for this method. First, if we look at the upper part of the equation, we can clearly see PBE taking into consider not only the mean difference, also the variability difference. And the second point I want to mention is we, if we look at the calculation of theta p, uh, which is a BE criterion, then we know the current uh, in current practice, theta p is determined from the log transformation of the data. Back to normal mode PSD comparison case. As we mentioned, for the monomode PSD comparison, D50 and span can be used to describe the PSD. So if we look if we look at the left side, by definition, D50 is defined as a 50 percentile of the distribution. And D90, D10 were defined as a 90 and a 10 percentile of the distribution. So the span can be defined as a D90 minus D10 divided by D50. If we look at the left side figure, we can see for the monomode PSD, D50 mainly talk about information about the median, and span mainly refer to the information about the variability of the uh, distribution. So we consider for the monomode PSD, D50 and span are sufficient to describe the information about PSD profile. And right side shows a flow chart when doing the comparison for monomode uh, PSD profiles. The blue 
and the red refers to reference and test. We first calculate D50 or span from the original PSD profile. Then PBE can be applied to the two group of metrics D50 or span to draw the BE conclusion. Talking about the complex PSD, for the complex PSD, for example, multi-mode PSD profile, then the D50 and span may not carry most important information. The left side figure gives us an example. In this example, we can see the PSD profile shows the bimodal uh, distribution. Then in this case, the D50 will be located near the trough between the peaks. So the D50 in this case carry less important information. Instead, for this type of a PSD, we consider whole profile comparison may be needed. And also one algorithm recommended in the guidance is Earth Move Distance, EMD, for profile comparison. Below we show the uh, draft guidance. What is EMD? EMD was derived from a transportation question. So for example, let's say uh, you have a pile of earth in your backyard, as shown in the panel A, the x-axis refers to the position of the earth pile, and the y-axis refers to the amount of the earth. Then you want to move this pile of earth into the aim status as shown in B. So we can see the position changed and the amount changed. So the EMD uh, was developed to address the question, what is the minimal cost of moving Earth from the current pile as shown in panel A to the aim pile as shown in panel B? So I want to put some notes on this method. So first, the cost includes uh, not only the amount of Earth moved, also moving distance. So, and the second note is if the Earth pile is considered as a histogram, then the EMD can be used to assess the difference between histograms. Here is how we transplant EMD for the profile comparison. The EMD is a widely used tool in pattern recognition, machine learning, computer vision, etc especially for discriminant analysis of the histogram type data. Fortunately, PSD, especially with intensity data, is a typical histogram data. So we think then EMD can be used to compare the PSD profile, especially complex PSD profile for equivalence tests. Now, I will introduce the equivalence approach based on the EMD algorithm. Given the ROD profile and the test profile as shown in the top of the slides, we first calculate the mean of the ROD profile, uh, we call the ROD center. By using EMD, we will calculate the distance between each individual ROD profile and ROD center to obtain a group of distance between RD center and uh, uh, all the individual RD profiles. In a similar uh, manner, we can use EMD to calculate a group of distance between RD center and the individual test profile. And then the PBE can be applied uh, uh, to, uh, to the two group of distance to draw the statistical conclusion. To demonstrate how to use the, uh, the equivalence approach based on the EMD algorithm, we will provide you a hypothetical study for complex PSD uh, equivalence assessment. So for, for this study, uh, we, have a, uh, we have an internal tested data for uh, ROD product, uh, negative control, and accordingly test sample X, test sample Y. Regarding the equivalence test, we will conduct the, the test uh, comparison for RD versus RD, RD versus negative control, RD versus test sample X, RD versus test sample Y. 
This slide shows the PSD profiles from the RD product. In the figure, we can see each thin blue line refer to the individual RD sample, and the bold red curve refer to the ground average among all the RD samples. Uh, if, we, if we look at those uh, curves, we can see the profile is not a monomode uh, PSD profile. So we consider the, the PSD is a, uh, this PSD is a complex. In this hypothetical study, all the data were generated internally by FDA lab. We had eight lots of RLD, three lots of negative control, which were manufactured by FDA lab. We also have three lots of a test sample X and three lots of a test sample Y. This slide shows the results when we compare RLD versus RLD. The left side uh, provide us a visual inspection of the PSD profile when we compare RLD versus RLD. Uh, from the visual inspection, we can clearly see the, R the PSD profiles between two groups. Actually, they are all from the RLD. They overlap very well. Uh, the, the bold uh, curve is the mean of the uh, PSD profile, and the dashed line referred to the uh, uh, standard deviation around the mean. So then if we, if we look at the right side, the right side figure shows the histogram of a calculated uh, uh, EMD value from two groups. We can see the two histograms uh, overlapped very well uh, uh, regarding the, uh, the region, also the distribution. So when we apply PBE to the calculated EMD distance, we can conclude the equivalence. This slide shows the results when we compare RLD versus negative control. The negative control sample uh, were manufactured by FDA lab. So we know the negative control is Q1, Q2, same with the RLD. But we deliberately made some change on the formulation. So we also know the negative control will have a different particle size distribution uh, with RLD. Again, the left side shows the visual inspection about the PSD profile. Uh, actually, very clearly, we can see the, R the, the PSD profile from RLD and negative control is different. And the right side shows the calculated EMD, histogram of the calculated EMD from two groups. Uh, and we can see two group of uh, 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 histogram. It's a separate, clearly. And also we can see the ROD, uh, uh, ROD group has a smaller EMD than the negative control. When um, PBE was applied, uh, we can conclude the equivalence cannot be established. This slide shows the PSD profile from the test sample X and the test sample Y. In each panel, the red curve uh, shows the test sample uh, X or Y imposed on the RLD sample, uh, uh, show as a red uh, blue curve. So when we uh, when we compare the the two panels, uh, we we can have an impression that the RLD and the test sample Y have a better overlapping than the RLD uh, versus the test sample X. Now I'm showing the EMD analysis for test sample X and the test sample Y. As showing the left figure, we calculate the EMD uh, from the uh, RLD and the test sample X. Then uh, this figure shows the histogram of obtained uh, the EMD uh, uh, value from two groups. So from, from the histograms, we can see the RLD, which is uh, orange, and the test sample, they are uh, a little bit overlapped, but uh, clearly separate. 
Same approach applied to Y. We calculate the EMD distance for ROD and the test sample. Uh, the figure, right figure, shows the histogram of the distance from two groups. Uh, in this case, when compare ROD and the test sample Y, we can see the histogram overlap very well. And the PBE applied to, to the, uh, uh, the uh, two group of uh, uh, EMD distance shows the equivalence can be established for test sample Y, but not for test sample X. Based on above analysis, then we conclude D50 and SPAN can provide critical information of a monomode PST for equivalence test, but may carry less important information for a complex PST. Profile comparison is considered as an effective method to assess the difference between complex PST profiles. The sub, -po sub -po uh, uh, point is a uh, EMD based equivalence approach can be used for the complex PSD profile comparison between a generic product and RD product. And also, the method validations uh, shows EMD approach is able to effectively reject unaccepted, unaccepted products, for example, negative control, and the past accepted products, for example, RD itself. Okay, now change question time. Question one. D50 and SPAN can be used to compare the whole profile of PSD. Is that correct? I'll give you uh, three seconds. One, two, three. Yes? No? The answer is no. D50 and SPAN can be used uh, to the monomode uh, PSD distribution. Question two. Uh, which of the following statement is not true? A. PSD comparisons can be a useful tool for BE assessment. B. D50 and SPAN may not carry most important information for complex PSD. 3. EMD can be used to compare PSD profiles for equivalence assessment. D. The PBE only consider the mean difference between test and reference. I give you uh, 5 seconds to choose your answer. One, two, three, four, five. Then the answer is D. Because the PBE uh, not only consider the mean difference, also the uh, variability difference between test and reference. At the end of the presentation, I would like to thank the supervision, help, and support from my colleagues, Rob, Stephanie, Liang and Darby from uh, OGD ORS, and Xiaoming from OPQ, uh, Office of uh, Testing and Research, and also our biostatistical colleagues Yi, Mei Yu, and Yu Ting. Thank you all. That concludes my presentation. Thank you.